Should second and eight. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down, here's Carr. The loop. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. And now they're in the hurry up. All right, here we go. Five and eight. Five, baby, alert. Alert. On third and long, it's Carr. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. And this will get out of bounds. No worries there, though. That still goes as a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. A first down throw for Prescott. Being chased out left. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give them 13 on the pick up there. And it'll be a Carolina first. And quickly, they get to the line. Prescott to throw it. Flush to his right. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Grady Jarrett breaking throw to get him for a loss of seven. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. Third and long for Prescott. And that is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Here's Brad Nortman now. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. And look at this, another fake. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Danny McRae. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll get 16 yards there, and it'll be first down New England. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? A dump off to Elliott. <laughs> and down to the 11. A big play there on the catch and run. 44 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. now on first down. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. This will be caught at about the five. 
That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to make the clock. To throw, it's Carr. And this is Carr. Touchdown, Patriots. Randall Cobb, a five-yard touchdown. So now a big spot for the Pats as they'll go for two. And the Patriots add six to their lead. Now Carr, and no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere seeing that play. Focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Field it about a yard deep. Carolina getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. Ohio! Ohio! Peterson alone Let's in the go. backfield. And he'll get it up the middle. To get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, Carolina. Willie Sneed. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Panthers are able to get this back within a touchdown. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, see, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes. Look at your timeouts. Make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted? So many things to go through. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They have the football, they're looking good, but the lead is just two, so any mistake in a field goal can beat you. they got to be careful. Ezekiel Elliott going to take it the distance. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Ezekiel Elliott, 78 yards. And the Patriots add on to their lead. So he's in for his third score of the game. And a defense probably saying, man, we, we don't want to see this guy for a long time. It's bad enough when anyone scores a touchdown against you. But for one person to get three, it almost sets him apart from the rest of the game. And no one likes to see any of those players on a pedestal. Not from the defensive point of view. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he is into the end zone again. So get him some oxygen. He scores on the long run and then punches in the two-point conversion for good measure. And following the touchdown, Josh Scobie now will kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Carolina getting set to take the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Prescott to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position. Couldn't hold on. Third down. 
Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. An extra quarter on the field for New England here on third down. Yeah, another DB. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Patriots are close to finishing off this football game. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. Getting down to the end here, they have a two-score lead, barely, but it's a two-score lead, so that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that, but you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. We'll, we'll see what happens here. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. To throw his car. And this is going to be incomplete. And you really can't pin that one on the quarterback, Charles. The O-line, they've got to protect them. And they know it. That's their meal ticket. They want to take care of the big guy behind them. In this case, they let him down. All right, here we go. Wide and eight. Wide. They'll go for it. It's Carr looking for the end zone. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Panthers will get the football back. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here we go. One, nine, three. Now, Prescott. Now, they set up the screen. That's complete. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step Ohio! aside. Ohio! Ohio! Here's Prescott. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Xavier Rhodes with a pick, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything, so kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. Carr going to look to throw. He's going to go up top again. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you think maybe you're just sitting on it. Now whistles blow, and the Patriots are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. One last shot now for Prescott. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. 